match against UNLV. 14 of his 16 made shots were layups. So we'll be watching those two very closely. Truly two of the best in college hoops. But there are other players who are worth noting as well. McDermott with a very experienced Creighton team as we take a look at the starting lineups. Grant Gibbs who is a sixth year senior and a heck of a player himself. Meanwhile on the other side for Arizona State the Sun Devils are 6 and 0. They've got two very impressive wins already. The little guy Jahi Carson the big man 7 to Jordan Bachinski one of the best shot blockers in college basketball as we are ready to go from Fuller to there is Jahi Carson the sophomore wait till you see him play if you haven't as fast and athletic as any guard in the country and there's the senior Doug McDermott he, there is nothing he cannot do at the offensive end before well, even against the big man the Creighton Blue Jays 20th ranked team in the country they win the tip and they've got the first possession of this game from Fullerton we are glad you've stayed with us late night McDermott first look of the game comes up short but an offensive rebound for Creighton Will Artino grabbed it now another look from three this time no good for Austin Chapman the junior point guard Carson and the Sun Devils have the ball for the first time I think if you're Arizona State you get the ball underneath to Baczynski early and often a distinct size and strength advantage Carson up top and the three look is good for Jermaine Marshall the Penn State transfer who's already made a big impact for the Sun Devils one year player for Arizona State after leaving Penn State he filled the void of Evan Gordon who left to go to Indiana and really I think a huge upgrade actually for the Sun Devils and Monaga gives it up to Chapman quick move blew right by Carson. The extra pass on the perimeter McDermott goes by Gilling and lays it in. Uh, it's going to be a difficult matchup for Gilling. He's a difficult matchup for anyone. But you know, the one thing that McDermott does such a great job of is he reads your body. If you're leaning one way he knows exactly where he's got to go to be successful. Paczynski with the elbow and they'll call him for the offensive foul. He got the elbow up a little bit too high for Paczynski. You see the ball get dumped down underneath and just tries to clear out that shoulder actually is what made the contact to the head if it was an elbow then that's a reviewable play maybe a potential flagrant one flagrant two I had a flagrant two the other night in my game in Kansas City but BYU and Wichita State Nate Austin and he got ejected but Paczynski very importantly for the Sun Devils stays in this game just a personal foul McDermott faces in and out no good Carson went way up and is looking at his teammate thinking well I had that rebound there's the head coach the dad of Doug Greg McDermott fourth year as the head man at Creighton the move of conferences this year a big part of Creighton's storyline heading into this college basketball season Jeff Goodman is with us here in Fullerton as well and Jeff will be a part of our broadcast Chapman dishes off Will Artino with the left hand and the finish beautiful pass in the interior and close quarters by Chapman now this promises to be an up and down kind of game a high scoring game two of the better offensive teams in the country Marshall down low good pass and the freshman missed the reverse Kulichov Igor Kulichov had a look couldn't finish McDermott posts up this time and in the lane had his shot maybe partially rejected Artino tried to save it in bounds saved it right to the Sun Devils Carson pulls up three no good Gibbs into the corner the three is good Pentagon. what a great touch pass by Gibbs going baseline defense collapses in focus it is a wide open uncontested three on the outside all created by Gibbs dribbling down and flattening up the defense Jonathan Gilling very good outside shooter for the Sun Devils good offensive player and back to Carson a little crossover move with the left hand high off the glass that's where Jahi Carson's game has developed from last year he would always go right this year he's got enough confidence to come back to his left hand and finish sort of scary to think he's gotten that much better he was the Pac-12 co-freshman of the year McDermott off a screen good the Gibbs just a great screen that time and McDermott a lot of emotion in the early stages of this game both these coaches both of these teams understand the significance of this game and just what a high level basketball game we're going to be watching Paczynski down low got great position had the ball poked away out of bounds off of Creighton and Jahi Carson we're talking about watch the way he comes up gets the ball a year ago it's all right a little crossover to his left able to take that big step and finish off the glass and then McDermott at the opposite end 
No chance Gillen's getting over the top of that screen by Gibbs. And it was McDermott that was wide open, and you see the passion. Well, the Stars have come to play here late night on Thanksgiving. Four inbound pass and a turnover for the Sun Devils. Into the front court, Managa finds McDermott, who ran the floor beautifully and scores. And a timeout for Herb Sendek and the Sun Devils. Quick timeout here from Fullerton. McDermott and the Blue Jays lead 11-5. Creighton off to a great start against Arizona State. Let's go inside the play. I'm going to show you what working early means as this ball gets going up the court. Go ahead and roll this out just a little bit, fellas. Freeze it right here. Look at the position that Doug McDermott is. Look at how deep he is. So when the pass comes in, he doesn't even have to really elevate at all to get that off the glass and in. That's what good preparation and doing work early can create for you in understanding where you are on the floor. Excellent job. Carson of the Sun Devils with the ball down six, still very early. And just as we expected, a lot of offense in the opening minutes. Baczynski finds his cutting teammate, and Kulichov had his shot rejected. Gibbs is doing so many of those little things that help you win basketball games right now. Gibbs gets an opening, hits a three. He's got an assist. He set a great screen to open up his teammate. He gets the block shot at the defensive end of the floor, and he comes down and hits the wide open three. These teams met last year, and Creighton got the win against ASU. There's a whistle and a foul against Managa, and that'll send us to a timeout. The two stars, Doug McDermott on the Blue Jays' side for the Sun Devils. Jahe Carson going head-to-head -head here, late-night Thanksgiving style in Southern California. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Tyco Integrated Security. Safer, smarter Tyco. And Audi. Truth in Engineering. Great field this year from Fullerton of the Direct TV Wooden Legacy. Early action, but it's been all Creighton 14 5 leading Arizona State. Doug McDermott doing it in a lot of different ways. Right, and you see the defense lean one way. There's no way Gillen's going to stay in front of him, able to finish coming off the screen, the mid range game, and then, of course, the last one, the post up game. How big of an impact does Doug McDermott has? My producer showed me these during the timeout and said, Hey, you got that, Doug? <laughs> Uh, it's easy to sort of get lost in the McDermott versus Carson. Jahe Carson with the ball for the Sun Devils. Still a long, long way to go. Just about four minutes and a half into this one. ASU, though, high-powered offensive team, and so far their offense has been a little ragged. Carson shoots a three. Way off the mark and out of bounds. Now let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast group, Jeff Goodman, who's followed Doug McDermott's career since he showed up at Creighton. I think, Jeff, early on, easy to see how much this game means to Doug. Yeah, he's playing with about as much emotion and passion as I've ever seen him, and he's more vocal, too. As a sophomore, he wasn't a leader at all. Now you can see he's kind of embraced that role, and again, he's going about as hard early as I've ever seen him. Maybe a little too hard with his teammates there going for the defensive rebound out of bounds off of Creighton. So Sun Devils keep it. Just a great game. I mean, when the brackets came out, Dave, you and I talked, spoke and said immediately, wow, that's going to be an unbelievable contest. Knowing the pieces that were coming back and really the importance of this game is specifically for Arizona State, who is looking to bulk up their non-conference schedule from a year ago. They've already got a win at UNLV. They beat Marquette at home just prior to their arrival of coming here for the DirecTV Wooden Legacy. Herb Sendek, they always run good out-of-bounds plays. Well, the execution on those situations, and those can be the difference maker of the course of a game. You get six, or six, six to eight points on out-of-bounds underneath, you're going to win a lot of games. They got sort of a free two there. Baczynski going to be tough for him to match up with McDermott, who goes strong to the basket and draws the foul. So he'll be shooting a couple of free throws. The head coach of the Sun Devils, Herb Sendek, his eighth year in Tempe. And it's been sort of a mixed bag for Herb, who thinks he has one of his very best teams. Well, and this is a team that, as you mentioned, is more than just Jahi Carson. And we've seen snippets of that already. Jordan Pachinski, though, is the difference maker. If he can sustain the level that he's played with, a double-double every single game this season for Arizona State, then Herb Sendek's team is for sure going to the NCAA tournament. They're a contender inside the Pac-12. 
The problem for Baczynski in this game with both Rogge and McDermott as the big man, when they play together, who does he guard? Well, and he's got to, he's got to step out and defend, and it takes him away from the basket, and one of his biggest strengths is his ability to block shots. So the free throw's good, 16-7 Creighton, two undefeated teams meeting here in Fullerton. Jack McKissick, number 40 off the bench. There's Baczynski, and he can take advantage of that mismatch on that end of the floor. Where, where you give up something, maybe at the defensive end, you can get it right back at the offensive end. Gibbs, and Creighton avoided the turnover there. Underneath the basket, I don't think Gibbs was quite ready for that one. Saved inbounds, who's gonna get it? Scramble, loose ball, and a jump ball. Arrow favors the Sun Devils. Well, Baczynski underneath the hoop. And look at the big target hands, ready, no catch, just keeps the ball high, doesn't bring it down, allowing the guard to come. And there's been a lot of growth in his game from a year ago. I mean, you go back to that, that game against UCLA in Pac-12 play. I mean, he, he looked sensational. And, and then after that, he kind of struggled with consistency. Well, they didn't keep official blocks back in the old days of the Pac-10, the Pac-8, but a conference record for Baczynski last year. McDermott with the rebound. Kind of an awkward little flip pass there to Devin Brooks, who looks like an impact transfer player for Creighton. Well, you've got Paczynski on McDermott, and this is a distinct advantage for Doug. He creates a shot, scores. Yeah, that, that's not going to work well. That's, that's not the answer. Ten early for Doug McDermott. Doug could go for 50 if that's going to be the matchup. Yeah, the Sun Devils are going to have to make an adjustment. Paczynski posting up against a smaller Raggi. Kulichov, the freshman, no good. Had a good look, just missed it. McDermott runs the floor again, and that'll be a goal 10. Count the basket. Uh, it's just smart basketball. It's great basketball. They want to push the ball up the floor. McDermott showed his target hand. It's up high up in the air. You see him like a wide receiver running behind the back of his defensive secondary. Waves his hand just for a second. Let's the quarterback know he's open. And they deliver the ball on time, on target, and a good finish. He goes to the bench, and he won't be there for long. No. Uh, 12 quick points out of the 20 already for Creighton. So McDermott off to a very hot start. Carson has been quiet, and he's going to have to play a big game for the Sun Devils. McKissick baseline. Baczynski, little step move, very awkwardly missed the shot, and then knocked the Creighton player to the ground, picks up his second personal foul. Yeah, that's a double whammy for her Zenick squad. Now, first of all, it, it started because of the footwork by Baczynski. His footwork was... Not strong. Look how narrow his base was when he went up. I mean, you're a big man. You need to have that big, strong, powerful base, and you go up hard. You don't bring your feet together where you can get pushed off balance. Will Artino, a savvy play there, almost like he just moved out of the way, let Baczynski get himself off balance. Tough shot goes down for Devin Brooks. He okay. looks like he's going to be a big-time player. Yeah, he transferred in this year from Iowa Western, and he can score. I think he is going to start to get more and more minutes and be more productive for Coach McDermott. Here's Carson trying to get to the basket, dribble the ball off his leg, and saved inbounds by the Blue Jays. Excellent three-point shooter. McKissick right on top of him. And that's how you have to defend Ethan Rogge. Well, that's all he does. Here's Brooks. Literally all he does. Another basket off the glass for Devin Brooks. Man, Creighton has come to play here tonight. Marshall spin move. Double team draws a foul. And that will send us to a timeout. Creighton playing so well, one of the reasons. Yeah, maybe one of the greatest walk-ons in college hoops history. We'll tell you a little bit more about that when we come back. Back it out, back it out. What do you want? Block it. Grant, box. Let's go. Let's go. Get in there. Step in, Grant. Let's Occupy him. What do you mean? Like when you say flat, like when they come up with the horn screen? It's like they're not even making the horns read first. Well, they're going to switch, so there won't be a read. Ten seconds, dig in! Back up, Austin! Switch here, Austin! Switch here! And Doug, your ball screen and getting the switch and going to the box against the guard. Mm -hmm. Okay? If Pachinski's on you, just keep on the move. He can't keep up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Avery, stick your chin in there on fire. Don't come over there like a whip. Put your chin on his shoulder. And he elbows you in the head, and he's out of the game. 
Jays on three. One, two, three, Jays. Jays. Well, good stuff there. We do appreciate Greg and Doug McDermott letting us listen in and practice yesterday for the Creighton Blue Jays. Doug will come back on the floor here. Jeff Goodman, part of our broadcast crew here in Fullerton. Jeff, explain to us how it is that Doug McDermott, maybe the best player in college hoops, is not a scholarship player this year. Yeah, he came back this year, guys, and there wasn't a scholarship for him. Frank Gibbs ended up taking the scholarship, so he is the best walk-on in the country. Think about all those illegal benefits, guys, going from dad to son. Well, it is kind of amazing. They did not expect Gibbs to get the sixth year, so they sort of filled up their scholarship. Well, Finally, the NCAA made the ruling, and they were out of scholarship. It's a tricky situation. The head coach is playing, paying for the star to come back and go to college. Nowhere else in the country does that happen. There's pretty good explanation. For it, <laughs> And I think Greg is happy to have Doug back at Creighton. Free throws for ASU trying to hang in this game. It's been all Blue Jays early, and McDermott has got a very short rest on the bench back in the game. Doug McDermott trying to become a three-time AP first-team All-American. Artino down low, and that's an offensive foul. Could have been a travel. They called the foul as he knocked over Jonathan Gillen. And Will Artino, not the most skilled player for the Blue Jays. He'll check out of the game. And empty possessions. It doesn't happen very often for Creighton. They value the basketball. Only two turnovers so far here in the first half. And part of the message for Herb Zendek's team has to be, look, we got the firepower to get back in this game. It's very early. And Baczynski being on the sideline, it becomes a much more perimeter-oriented team. And then you look at Jahi Carson, and he's been very quiet so far. A tough play by Shaq McKissick, the junior and junior college transfer. He'll go to the free throw line. Had a chance to finish there and get a three-point play. Instead, two free throws. Now, as you mentioned, though, the firepower for Arizona State. Marshall and Carson are the two players out on the floor right now that need to ignite this offense. Gilling can get hot from the outside, and when he does, he's really, really good. But for Herb Senek's team, this is a team that is not playing a slow it down style. I mean, perception sometimes uh, isn't reality. And the reality of this program and this team is they are pushing the ball up the floor. They are looking to score. They want to play at least in the 70s. And in this contest, that's exactly where Creighton wants to be. And in the early stages, Creighton has benefited. Well, Coach Sendek, his teams have been very slow moving a lot of years in his head coaching career. Not anymore, not with G.E. Carson. Double team comes trying to get the ball out of the hands of McDermott. A change up defensively for Arizona State. They weren't bringing that double team initially. It's a good change. But 12 quick points for Doug. It'll make you make you move and change. Had it stripped away. Stolen by ASU. Carson gets it. Teammates sort of got in the way. Marshall in transition. Too strong on the three. Here's Chapman going to the basket. Good defense by Jahi Carson. Kissick shoots a three, way short. Sun Devils off the mark here in the first half. Now shooting just slightly above 30% from the field. There's Gibbs, draws the foul. Uh, on the opposite side of things right now, Creighton is shooting 70% from the floor. I mean, there's the difference in the game. One team is executing and finish and gives an excellent job driving down the lane and finishing through contact. Well, there's the strength of your sixth year senior. Fight through the contact. Does not complete the three point play. It's so vital to success and Creighton is going to have this season. I mean, he just understands the system. Gibbs and McDermott have such a great relationship on the floor. They know exactly where they're going to be, how to set the table up for one another. Richie Edwards transfer from Falpo, posting up against Rocky. Tough move and scores. Edwards was a good player at Falpo. There goes Chapman right down the lane, passed up the layup. Managa missed the three. Should have just taken the layup. McDermott goes for the steal. Gilling and had his shot blocked by McDermott hustling back. McDermott gets the touch against Gilling, and that really is just a mismatch. 
So McDermott will shoot free throws. Direct TV with Legacy Championship game, by the way, on Sunday. So we'll play again tomorrow with the semifinals. Marquette, George Washington, San Diego State against the winner of this one. And the championship game, 9.30 Eastern on ESPN2 after the off day Saturday on Sunday. And we won't be here in the Titan gym. We'll be over at the Honda Center just a few miles away in Anaheim. You know, and, and Doug McDermott at the free throw line. He has shot 22 free throws in the last two games. Of course, 15 of them came in his last outing where he had 33 points and 15 rebounds. But offensively, his footwork, and we saw a, a sampling of that on that possession where he caught the ball, the double team comes, he's able to split the double team. He reads it so perfectly that it forces you to foul him. And they really almost play this like an NBA team would, where they buy a minute here and there near an automatic timeout, get a little rest for their star player. And I think Doug was trying to argue with his dad, hey, I don't need to come out of the game, I'm fine. He's, Jeff Goodman was talking about, though, he is as fired up as I've ever seen him. McKissick saved the ball inbounds. Edwards, a little shot fake, passed up the three. Here's he's got to attack, he's got to go. He gets something going to the rim. Well, that works. The assist to McKissick. A very unselfish play and a, and a nice pass, but I, I want to see Jahi Carson get back into the scoring column. And it's, I'm guaranteeing Herb Sendick is sitting on the sideline saying, yeah, we need Jahi Carson to score some points. And he could turn it on in a hurry. Gibbs again scores with contact. It's tough when Creighton is playing and functioning at a, such a high clip like they are right now to try to crawl back into this thing. And evidence, a couple possessions without McDermott on the floor, getting easy looks. Carson shoots another three, hits it. He's been much better from behind the arc this season. In the early stage of this game, not so much. A kiss a good weak side defense there with the help. That creates the steal. And Carson's three-point game has gotten so much better. Cut off by Chapman. That was good defense. Edwards hits the three, though. Yeah, Edwards has been a great spark off the bench. And you know, the one thing that he does is he's a little bit more mobile than Baczynski. So he's matching up a little bit better at the defensive end of the floor. You like offense. This is a game for you. And we like offense. <laughs> There's no question. Contact away from the ball. Edwards. There's Chapman in the lane, too strong, offensive rebound, put back too strong from Zach Hansen. The freshman from South Dakota, they think he's ultimately going to be a good player. Carson was feeling it, but came up short. Partially because he was fading away when he elevated. There was no need to fade away on that shot. Just go straight up, straight down, follow through that release, and he wouldn't have been short. And a guy thought about the three. Instead, we'll work some more clock. Seven minutes to go, first half. Two undefeated teams here in this quarterfinal matchup. Gibbs travel. That's a turnover for Creighton. Well, the Sun Devils are starting to get it going, and a big part of that is their star sophomore. So he Carson, he can drive it. He's been working on the shot. That one goes down. We got ourselves a nine-point game. A 30 to 21 lead for Creighton 656 to go here in the first half our one on one was pretty easy to come up with here in this one two of the big time stars in college hoops sometimes we get creative this one just keep it simple it's about the two stars the two wooden award candidates and how they're playing yeah and McDermott fantastic first half Carson starting to get going these two teams do know each other Sean now, of course they played on the U19 World Championship team Carson and McDermott that, that relationship and yeah, they, they both understand their styles very distinctly different than the way they go about it but both of them highly successful you know, I guarantee you both of these guys too on Thanksgiving night with a big audience watching but the head to head matchup gave him a little something extra coming into this game well and the confidence really of a player like Jahi Carson I mean he lets you know he's a confident player and McDermott is a little bit understated and talks about his team more than he talks about himself. They left Marshall open, the soft touch, and the Penn State transfer knocks down the three. And, and we've got a great game. The execution has been much better in, in the last two minutes 
for Arizona State. A nine nothing run for the Sun Devils. Doug McDermott is back on the floor after sitting for a couple minutes even when he didn't want to. Cut off on the baseline. As Avery Dingman hands it back to Brooks. Devin Brooks open for a three. Good. And if you're going to hug Doug McDermott because you're afraid of what he's going to do and you're going to give open looks, Brooks can make you pain. He's had a great start to this game. Kissick. Carson backdoor. Edwards couldn't hit him, though. Doug Brooks, he had 16 in that win against St. Joe's. Gee, Edwards, he's been very active with the foul. Edwards with the strong finish underneath. And the Boston Red Sox beard. It worked in the playoffs. It's working right now for Herb Sendick. Yeah, he's become a big part of this Sun Devils team. Nobody pulled on it, though. If well, it was Mike Napoli, you're pulling on it. I, I think he, he a little more growth to come if you really want to have a pull opportunity. There's some marketing there. Edwards, he's distinctive. You notice him on the court. Misses the free throw, though. McDermott, another rebound. He's become a better rebounder, not just a scorer. There's Brooks, the spin move against Carson. This team will be elite if Brooks can play like that on a consistent basis. Carson wants to answer, and he does. Woo. He'll sit you down and make you fall to the floor. And now Carson matches up against Gibbs, at least for the moment. Up and down action here in Fullerton. Well, they're trying to post up Gibbs, seeing the mismatch. The call from the sideline from Coach McDermott. McDermott sets the screen. Now shot clock down to seven. Brooks pull up three. Got another one. When you have a player that can come off your bench and do what he's doing right now, boy, it makes the world a difference. Here's Marshall fouled as he goes to the basket. You, you have an elite scorer in Doug McDermott, one of the best players in the country. You know everybody's going to be focused on him. That's fine. You can pick your po poison, but watch Brooks. This move here, the spin off Jahi Carson, the beautiful finish off the glass. He's got 12 points. 10-point lead for the Blue Jays of Creighton playing defense now against Carson and the Sun Devils. Edwards, too strong and up over the backboard. Devin Brooks, Jeff Goodman, seems like he's going to be a big part of this Creighton team as they head into the Big East. We'll check in with Jeff here when we get a moment. Brooks off the dribble, had it poked away, and Edwards comes up with the steal. Carson looking down the court. Here's Jahi Carson and an offensive foul. Jahi Carson in the open floor trying to create that time, trying to do a little bit too much. They're coming right down the middle of the lane to stand there and accept it. And Jahi Carson did nothing to avoid it. Austin Chapman brings the ball up this time. McDermott. The Rocky has been very quiet. McDermott passed up the three, used the left hand, and his shot blocked Great by job. Marshall. Great job by Marshall sliding over from the weak side position to block that shot. The secondary defensive player. Creighton did get back on defense. Here's Marshall with the right hand. No whistle. Out of bounds, though, off of Gibbs. A timeout here from Fullerton. Ten-point lead. Creighton 38, Arizona State 28. Well, indeed, that is a heck of a matchup. Our journey to the tourney game presented by Sonic coming up on Friday, 6 Eastern on ESPN. The fourth ranked team in the country, the Arizona Wildcats, the sixth ranked Duke Blue Devils in the NIT season tip off championship, a clash of styles to the great freshmen in America, two final four contenders for sure. We'll meet at Madison Square Garden. I love both those teams in the early stage of the season. I know Duke has had a couple of really tight games as of late. 
Uh, but Rodney Hood and Jabari Parker, that tandem is as good at scoring the basketball as any duo in the country. And I like the balance that Sean Miller has on his team. You know, you look at the numbers for the freshmen, everybody talks about it. All oh, Eric Gordon's numbers are, are down from everybody else. Aaron Gordon doesn't have to do as much because he's got a lot of other parts around him. Plays with such great energy, such great passion. Now, Jahi Carson, it has not been easy for Carson. He has seven points, three assists in his first half. But Creighton's making it tough on the sophomore point guard. The foul, though, against the Blue Jays sends McKissick to the line for a one and one. Well, and it hurts Arizona State a little bit when you look at Jordan Baczynski and yep. the fact that he's not out on the floor. He's got two personal fouls. As I mentioned off the top, a double double in every game. He averages five blocks per contest and shooting 68% from the floor. That opens up a lot of offense for Jahi Carson when he's out there. They don't have that right now. In his place, though, Richie Edwards has done a pretty darn good job. Uh, but it's a different type of player, so it changes the complexity of this offense. Yeah, Baczynski basically has been a non-factor in this game. Managa on the perimeter, matched up with Marshall. McDermott sets another good screen. Managa had it poked away as he went to the basket, and that's a foul against Managa. Kulichov crashing the defensive boards, and he's going to be the one going to the free throw line. I mean, it's just a complete breakdown at the defensive end of the floor. Though. I mean, you, you allow a player to sweep through, drive right down the middle of the lane, and nobody steps to. There's no rotations on the weak side to pinch on in. Now, Igor Kulichov, talk about an interesting story. The freshman born in Russia, grew up in Israel, played his high school basketball in Florida. Now he's in Arizona. Issue with the official is against somebody checking in at the scorer's table and they're gonna sub out. But they think this kid has a chance to be a really good player. Missed the front end, but there's Edwards. Had it poked away though after he grabbed the offensive rebound. The Sun Devils miss an opportunity there. McDermott had good post position. There was Marshall again though on defense. Whoa. Great hustle by Chapman to get to the ball and the timeout for the Blue Jays. What a what an effort play by Chapman. Uh, it's just a sensational effort to sell out to get the ball. So a timeout here from Fullerton. This quarterfinal game of the Direct TV Wooden Legacy. Doug McDermott and Jahi Carson, the headliners. And we've seen uh, some ups and downs from Carson. McDermott's been spectacular. Uh, McDermott taking him off the bounce. The post up in transition, able to finish. Jahi Carson. I think it's been a little tougher for him here in the first half, but he's seen glimpses of what he can do. And as you mentioned, partner, he can get going. And when he does, he usually strings together and starts rolling. Well, our Wendy's wouldn't watch two prime candidates for that wooden award. You see their ranking nationally in points per game, rebounds per game at eight for Doug McDermott. The efficiency of both of them, though, 55 percent. And the three-point percentage higher this year for Jahi Carson. He's limiting his numbers and taking quality over quantity. Well, Kulichov, the freshman, playing pretty good defense against McDermott there. Gibbs hustles. Gilling, though, comes away with it. And maybe an advantage for the Sun Devils here. Carson on the attack. Carson under the basket. Gets his own miss. Carson, one dribble, is fouled. And Jahi Carson, a little frustration there, I think, at the end of the play. Some physical play near the basket. Well, Let's take another look. They're swiping and reaching underneath. Jahi Carson's got to be careful because his elbow got awfully high here, and you're going to see it at the end of this play. Excellent job fighting, scratching, and then you miss it at that angle, but his elbow was high as he ripped back through. And he's got to keep his composure. Carson makes the first of two free throws of so Jeff Goodman. You know, some players come into a program and they change the feel of the program. Carson sort of changed everything about Arizona State, didn't he? Yeah, he changed the way Herb Sendek plays. He changed the way Herb Sendek acts. He really saved, in many respects, Herb Sendek's job. I mean, he was coming off two bad years, 10 wins, 12 wins. And now look at him. They're a fringe, certainly a team in the discussion for the NCAA tournament. And I think even expectations much above that. But Carson, he changed everything about this Sun Devils program. McDermott trying a little hook shot from about 12 feet away. Well, Sun Devils trying to make a push here at the end of the first half. Creighton's been in control in this one. Bad pass by Gilly. Terrible pass. The steal by the Blue Jays. Gibbs in transition. Whistles. And that's an offensive foul. Good defensive stop that time. And you know, to follow up. 
on what Jeff Goodman was saying about the offense and how it changed. I mean, we'll take another look at the charge from right down the lane, right into the chest, and Gibbs just a little bit too fast. But playing fast has been a good thing. The numbers offensively from before Jahi Carson to afterwards, the points per game and how it's changed, I mean, it's, it's dramatic. Edwards off the dribble right. He was giving him all kinds of room. Here's Marshall, and that is an illegal screen. Well, Kulichov just got sort of turned around there and committed the offensive foul. The, the, the numbers of what we're looking at, the 41 previous games, they were averaging just 61 points per contest, May 62, with Jahi Carson in the lineup. The wins completely different, and of course the point production over 12 points more per game. Yeah, and I think that's what you and Jeff are both talking about. It was a total transformation in terms of the style they play. There's Brooks. A rare miss for him, and Gilling is fouled. McDermott goes over the back. There's some, some tempers in this first half. This game means a lot on both sides. That time it was McDermott who got a little chippy at the end of the play. Well, and those are the type of fouls that Doug has to avoid. Yeah. I and mean, those are the fouls. Okay, now you see you stop the clock with a minute 40 left to go. You're setting them to the free throw line, and there was no need. I mean, just there, there was no need. You, you had no opportunity to get that rebound. Just his first personal, but your point is well taken. And it creates the two shot opportunity for a good free throw shooter, John Gilling, Denmark native, junior. Missed the first, but it was the double bonus. McDermott was ready for the rebound. Arizona State not making free throws. That was a problem for them a year ago. They, they lost a couple of games down the stretch where if they would have shot better at the free throw line, they would have picked up wins and all likelihood would have made the NCAA tournament. Gilling misses them both. They're 5 of 12 as a team in the first half. And Gilling's too good of a shooter to just miss both. Chapman, nifty dribbling, but Carson stays with him, and now a foul away for the ball. McDermott knocked to the ground. So physical play and a little bit of chippiness here in the final stretch of this, this first half. Uh, not a great sequence for John Gilling, who misses the two free throws. He committed a turnover a minute ago, and now he sends Doug McDermott to the free throw line. Not the place you want Doug McDermott to be at, no. Well, let's be honest, you don't really want him anywhere on the offensive end of the floor. I think the best offensive player in the country makes the first, earns the second. You know, you look at the highlights, and we, we show it all the time, and Marcus Smart getting up into the rim, all these talented freshmen. You know, there's sizzle and there's pop to all of them. But when you watch Doug McDermott, what you see more than anything is substance. It's consistent substance every single night, and you have to appreciate it. And when every team comes into their games, Planning around him, creating defenses to try to stop him. It is impressive. Sun Devils down nine with the ball. Carson spin move, and they're going to wave the basket off and say it was a travel. Jahi Carson trying to create, goes right, spins back to his left, and no question. Good call. So it looked good, but that's a turnover. Final minute of the half, nine point lead for Creighton. Brooks has been a star for the Blue Jays, and he wants to take Edwards one on one. Here's a three and a foul on the three with the basket for Isaiah Zierden. Wow. This young man. Won the three-point title at Blue Jay Madness. The kick out, the slow closeout, the contact. Still able to hold the follow through. And you get the travel at one end, an empty possession for Arizona State, and now a four-point play at this end with under a minute left to go. You had it at nine, it's at 13. The final minutes of this half have been damaging for the Sun Devils so far. And Doug will go sit on the bench for the final 46.2. There's Carson, gives it up. Edwards 
looking back door. They cut it off there. Chapman, more good defense. Here's Marshall bullying his way to the basket foul. Free throws for the Sun Devils. You can get close to all the action wherever you are. The new Sports Center app, blazing fast scores, hottest news and highlights, analysis, access to your favorite Sports Center talent 24 7 via Twitter. Download the new Sports Center app by calling Star Star SC from your phone. That's all you got to do call Star Star SC from your phone to get the new Sports Center app. So you, if you get that app, you get to follow Jeff Goodman on Twitter. That's a win win for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff is. Maybe the best college basketball follow on Twitter. He gives you news from all around the country. Well, and Doug McDermott just checked in the game. I'm sure he just tweeted that out as well. And the offensive defensive switch. They don't want him picking up a second personal foul. You sit him down the defensive end of the floor, you foul. Okay, you bring him back in for the offensive possession, the final possession of the half. You want your best offensive weapons out there, and they are. And the Sun Devils decided they weren't going to make free throws in the first half. Just abysmal from the line for a good shooting team. Final 15 seconds. Creighton can hold for the final shot. It's the junior transfer, Devin Brooks. He's got 12 in this half. And he wants to take the Sun Devils one on one. Brooks falls down, but it's a blocking foul. I've never even considered giving the best player in the country a touch. But Brooks draws the foul anyway. Well, and he walked up to Doug right afterwards and was talking to him. It's I don't know if you're saying I'm sorry I didn't get you the ball because that was a good move. I mean, he, he, he made his defensive player fall. He gets himself to the free throw line. It's been an outstanding first half for Devin Brooks. Two free throws, misses the first. And Doug McDermott will sit back down. They don't want him picking up a careless foul with 1.9 seconds left to go. He only has one personal foul, so it's, Doug is not in foul trouble. But just in case, right. no reason to even risk it. I think this young man at the free throw line can really help Creighton be amongst the top in the Big East all season long. He's going to get more and more minutes. He's playing with more and more confidence. So here's Carson. Can he get a look off from behind half court? Comes up short. And the Sun Devils. A little short in terms of their effort in the first half. Creighton really took it to an undefeated Arizona State team. That was impressive. It was excellent execution and emotion early. Doug McDermott did everything he wanted to do offensively, but Brooks, a big part of their success. And headed to the locker room, Jeff Goodman standing by with the head coach, Greg McDermott. Jeff? Greg, talk a little bit about what you did, G.H. Carson, holding him nine points in the first half. Well, we just tried to bottle him up and corral him as much as he could, as we can, and keep him out of the paint. He's so, uh, uh, you know, he's so effective when he gets into the lane with both hands. And I thought Austin Chapman did a great job on him. Doug did a great job early scoring the ball. And then Devin Brooks, a guy most people don't know about, comes up huge in the uh, second part of the first half. How much of a key will he be? Well, he'll be key because he can get into the paint and break down the defense. And, you know, Baczynski got that second foul, and we were able to take advantage of that matchup and pull him out, pull him out on the floor. And um, it'll be a different second half. We're going to be need ready to go. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Jeff. As we get ready for halftime, Zubin Mahenti, Dan Dockage standing by, Arizona State trailing by 14. Now we'll go to the Land Rover halftime report. Take it away, guys. Half stats brought to you by Direct TV, focusing in on Brooks and McDermott. But you're right, Arizona State we need some help for Carson. Baczynski is back on the floor with those two personal fouls. Gibbs, as he always did, does, did a lot of good things for the Blue Jays in the first half. Gets himself to the free throw line. Here's a three look, and Managa hits it. Just an excellent job dribbling into the middle of the paint, sitting down on balance, and delivering a perfect pass. 48 31, biggest lead of the game for Creighton. Here's Carson with the dribble move, missed the shot, rebound Creighton. And those are shots Jahi Carson normally knocks down. Gibbs, nobody ever stopped him. Rebound tipped up, no good. McDermott stays with it. But finally, the freshman Kulichov rips it away and almost throws it away. This really kind of out of sorts coming out of the locker room for Arizona State. Another bad pass. And save right to Chapman. One on one. Kulichov fouls him. Chapman will shoot free throws. 
that Jaheed Carson as he profiled one of the more dynamic scorers in all of college basketball drives down the lane and he hits that shot more often than not and you and I did a lot of their games a season ago and he consistently is a guy that knocks down those shots in the second half over of his career in the second half of games he has been outstanding shooting better than 51 percent from the floor averaging 11 points per second half game that he's played in so he can get it going and he needs to right now big games already this year and wins at UNLV against Marquette so he's played good competition even this season certainly did so last year really chopped with three fouls now and the lead is up to 19 Creighton really playing well John Gilling matched up with McDermott and McDermott's played good defense against him. Kulichov just had nowhere to go. Gibbs right there ties him up. Arizona State will keep the ball, but it's very tough on the offensive end for the Sun Devils. You know, so we, we talk about Creighton's offense so often, but their defense has been very impressive tonight. They're holding Arizona State under 40% shooting on the game. They've already forced nine turnovers in this game. Those are opportunities to run out and get higher percentage looks. Well, they don't they, they don't hide it. They're an offensive-oriented team. Offense is the strength of their team, but their defense needs to be better, particularly going to the Big East. That's a travel. And it has been better tonight. John Gilling has had a really rough game, and Herb Sendek wants a timeout. Sun Devils are struggling against the 20th ranked team of the country. It's 50 to 31. Creighton has the lead. Jeff Goodman back here at the Wooden Legacy at Cal State Fullerton. I sat down with Doug McDermott last year, had dinner with him, and he all but told me he was gone to the NBA. What changed his mind? A conversation with former Creighton star Kyle Korver, who told him that no matter whether he was drafted 25, as he probably would have been a year ago, or maybe 40 this year when the draft is stronger, he'd still have to beat out people to stay in the NBA. And that stuck with Doug McDermott. He came back because he knew he wanted to finish his career in style, and he wanted to play for his father going into the Big East. And Jeff, thanks for that. It is obviously has transformed this Creighton program. Another year with maybe the best player in college hoops going into the Big East Conference, a huge transition year for the Blue Jays, a change of heart that has Creighton poised for a huge year in J.E. Carson with a spectacular move, a chance for the three-point play. A nice job by Carson driving the lane and getting himself to the free throw line of the made basket. And take a look at the numbers per year for Doug McDermott, two-time first-team All-American, and you mentioned it, has the possibility to be a three-time first-team All-American, be the first player to do it since Tisdale and Ewing. Yeah, that's good company. AP All-American three years in a row. It hasn't been done since Patrick Ewing and Wayman Tisdale 30 years ago, basically. Good job by Jaheed Carson. We'll see if that lights a fire and sparks up the Sun Devils. Uh, Arizona State, they're a very good offensive team normally. They haven't played very well offensively tonight, but they got plenty of time to come from behind in this game. They have to play a little better on this end of the floor. Chapman over to McDermott and Baczynski trying to stay with him. It's just been a silent night for Baczynski until now. The rejection of Chapman. The first block shot for Baczynski. One of the best shot blockers in all of the game. Marshall rattles on the three. 6-0 run, last two possessions. Sun Devils need even more of that. McDermott trailing. Gives right back to McDermott. Short, rebound Sun Devils. Here's Carson so quick he got fouled, they say on the floor. Not a shooting foul. You know, good job, Arizona State turning up the pressure, applying the pressure on, on Creighton because they get a defensive stop. The eraser at one end and immediately push it up the floor. Little hesitation dribble, Marshall in the corner, able to knock down the three-point shot. But you, what you're seeing is when you get a defensive stop and you look back at the first half numbers for Creighton, they shot 55% from the floor. It's difficult to get out and run if you're, if you're taking it out of the net. Great entry play, another one for the Sun Devils. Uh, Edwards found Marshall. And an 8-0 run.
for Arizona State. Jahi Carson with the clap, and Sun Devils trying to creep their way back in. And it's not just an 8-0 run. It's an 8-0 run in one minute of yeah, play. So very quickly starting to cut into that lead. Gibbs thought about the three. I think the defensive intensity has picked up a little bit. Shot clock winding down. The pass stolen by McKissick. And maybe a three on two. Maybe just a one on two. How about this? The Sun Devils coming to life. And it's starting because of their intensity at the defensive end of the floor. Uh, they are much more active. They are talking. They're being aggressive. They're creating turnover opportunities. And they're executing flawlessly at the offensive end. When the defense is spread out and, and Creighton's not all packed in, it allows you to get the looks. And watch, a poor pass here by Doug McDermott over the top. And then in the open floor, defense doesn't stop the ball. Gibbs trying to channel him, uh, but just on his heels and then just allows the blow by and the finish. And it's a great job. The bench is back alive. Everybody's feeling a little bit better. There's a little bounce in the step finally for the Sun Devils. And I think you pointed it out at halftime, Sean. They needed Baczynski, and he got that run really started or at least built the run with the blocked shot. And I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on John Gilling, but Edwards as opposed to Gilling, I think, has been a win for the Sun Devils. There's the 10-0 run in under two minutes. Well, Edwards is more physical at the defensive end of the floor. He can push Doug McDermott off of his line. And that's what he was able to do. And now, coming out of this timeout, you've got Paczynski on McDermott. I try to go right after that if I'm great. Right, just clear out, let him go. Well, we'll see what the Blue Jays do out of the timeout. Gibbs was fouled on the floor. So that's a hand check foul against Jermaine Marshall that will send us to a timeout. Different feeling ball game though all of a sudden. A run for the Sun Devils has the lead down to 11. Arizona State down 11 on a 10-0 run. Herb Sendek's team coming off a big win at home on Monday against a team that's in this field. Marquette, look at the Sun Devils celebrate. Carnegie Mellon, head coach Herb <laughs> Sendek up on the table celebrating with his team. Uh, just a great feeling for coach, and, and what a great win it was for Arizona State. Jordan Paczynski, 14 points, 11 rebounds, 7 blocks in that game, and this against a very good Marquette defensive team 54 percent from the field for the Sun Devils so you're saying you learn those moves when you go to a party school like Carnegie Mellon <laughs> exactly yep. I've always thought that good defense but a better offensive move from Grant Gibbs the six-year senior playing well again Carson fouled by Chapman and I think that is a pretty good example there of how they're officiating now that freedom of movement initiative well, and he's one player in particular that can benefit maybe as much as any player in the game because of his speed. Yeah. It is going to be so difficult for defenders to stay in front of him. And you're, you're, what you've been doing for the last you know, 15 years of your life is, hey, somebody drives, you're putting an elbow or something on him. This year it's a foul. Now it's Brooks. Kevin Brooks, who played well in the first half for Creighton, matched up with Carson. Jinsky posting up against Rocky, who's come in the game. The pass stolen away by Brooks. A nice defensive play. McDermott running the floor. Rocky trailing. Three. No good. But a foul against Edwards. McDermott was there in position. And that's just good unselfishness. You, you watch the shot go up, the push in the back. Easy call to be made, but good unselfishness by Creighton. Uh, you get the ball up in transition, you get the ball to Doug McDermott, you're thinking maybe he's going to take a sh shot. Instead, he turns around and throws it right out. Uh, Baczynski's going to come out now and at least get a little rest. McDermott, 16 points, 14 of those in the first half. So the first five minutes have been relatively quiet for McDermott. Posts up right away against the freshman, blows right by him, and they call the foul on the floor, which... Is sort of unbelievable. Uh, he's got great patience. When he catches the ball and turns and faces, it's very difficult for a young freshman to stay in front of him because he'll see where your body and your footwork is, and he reads it as, as quickly and as well as anybody in the game. Well, the good news, Doug, is when you play at the next level, that is definitely a basket plus a free throw. And I think at this level, that should be a basket and a free throw. Kulachov was in for about 10 seconds, committed his fourth foul. 
and he's not happy about it. Now it's Paczynski right back on him. McDermott in and out, no good. Tip up is good. It's Brooks again. Right over the top of Jahi Carson to tip that one in. He has been active from every second that he's been on the floor tonight. Yeah, really impressive. Edwards back to Carson. Goes middle. Carson fouled. Tough to defend. Carson got hit right on the top of the head. When you go back to the other end of the floor, McDermott trying to size up Baczynski and right up over the top, you see Brooks get his fingertips on it. He mentioned limited minutes, maximum production. Eight minutes in the first half, 13 points, comes right off the bench, picks up a couple more. Well, I like the way you put it in the first half. He's a difference maker for this team. He changes Creighton. They, they lost their big man Gregory Echenique from last year. Basically everybody else is back plus this guy. I mean, this has a chance I think to be a, a significantly improved team largely because Devin Brooks. Well, free throws need to improve for Arizona State. They are now seven of 17 from the free throw line. Man. Not good enough. It's a 14 point game. They missed 10 free throws. Still plenty of time to go for the Sun Devils. McDermott, see if he can take Baczynski off dribble. Brooks is going to shoot the three and hit the three. I mean, you have to choose what you're going to do at the defensive end of the floor. And when he comes out of the floor and he's playing like this, the defensive end, offensive end, he's all over the place right now. So it's Brooks on the attack again. Devin Brooks, good again. 20 for Brooks, leading all scores for Creighton. He's got 20 points in about 12 minutes of play out on the court. McDermott and Carson, we forgot to add Devin Brooks. Uh, the junior college transfer making an impact. He has shown glimpses in the early stages of the season. In 15 minutes against Alcorn State, he had 15 points, six rebounds, and five assists. He had an excellent job against St. Joe's with 16 points and a late steal. In this game, it has been from the moment he stepped on the floor, he has been productive and he has made a huge difference for Creighton in this game. This was getting tight and now it's back out to 19. It's back out to 19 because of Devin Brooks. He has done a little bit of everything from the outside. You've got to get a hand up. And if he can do this consistently, and that's that's the question. If he can do this consistently, this Creighton team could win the Big East. Well, Brooks has just been tremendous in this game. And now playing defense against the Sun Devils. John Gilling. Here's a three right side. No good. Rebound Creighton. Well, Herb Sendek not happy with his frontline players, and he has sat most of them down. So going deep into the bench, the Sun Devils, Kalen Robinson on the floor. He missed that last three. Side to Mala on the floor. Kissick almost came away with the steal. And the man of the night, Devin Brooks. McDermott right by Baczynski, had a shot block, stayed with it and scores. A great job by Baczynski. The great stick two to miss by McDermott to stay with it and get it back up quickly. So the Sun Devils felt like they were right back in it, and now it's feeling like a blowout again. McKissick works his way close, misses the shot from point blank range. Just a disastrous sequence for the Sun Devils. Good quick pass from McDermott. The three was missed, though. Jalen Robinson, sophomore from Tempe, so a hometown kid. McKissick shoots. Too strong. Rebound. Controlled by Tamala. His follow goes down. Well, Herb Senek, as you mentioned, going deep into his bench right now. And typically that is not the Sun Devils style. They have a fairly short bench, but I think 
the head coach of Arizona State just unhappy. Jinsky, what a block on Brooks. Here's Gilling, hits a three. Well, he can get going. We saw him a year ago up in Washington where he just hit three after three after three. And they need every one of those if he's going to get going tonight because they, they've struggled to have consistency within it all. Dermot tries to answer. That was the first basket, first points for John Gillen. Passed up the three there. It's a blocking foul against Creighton. So that sends us to a timeout. The Blue Jays and Doug McDermott doing a heck of a lot right here tonight against the Sun Devils. Well, even when you feel as if it's a positive for ASU, McDermott working along Baczynski, the big block, you think it's eight. That's a good play. Gets right back in his hands, the soft touch off the glass. Things going the way of the Blue Jays. Back here in Fullerton, it's 63-47. Creighton with the second half lead. The Honda Center just a few miles from where we are here tonight. And that's where these teams, everybody in this DirecTV Wooden Legacy, wants to get for the final, the championship game on Sunday, 9.30 Eastern on ESPN2. A tournament loaded with good teams. Marquette, George Washington, they've already advanced. San Diego State was really impressive earlier tonight. Very impressed with Matt Shrigley, Winston Shepard. They both played extremely well for the Aztecs in that win against College to Charleston a hard fought game for George Washington and boy they have they've gotten off to a great start they haven't lost a game yet this season a difficult matchup tomorrow against Marquette a lot of good basketball being played here in Southern California as part of the DirecTV Wooden Legacy well, Carson is back in the game for the Sun Devils do they have a, a run in them again they got the lead down made a run and watch Creighton answer back Paczynski into the corner and the three-pointer short offensive rebound though controlled by Chance Murray freshman from here in Southern California Murray open three comes up way short you can't just settle for three-point shots so I, I really feel as if on that possession Baczynski should have been a little bit more aggressive and try to get to that half hook Gibbs into the corner here's a three look for Creighton in and out no good McDermott had the position against Baczynski but Carson took the ball away Extra pass and Tamala misses another look from three. So the Sun Devils are launching from the outside and not hitting. Uh, I mean, he, he's been wide open. Nobody within 15 feet of him on the catch. And you're struggling to shoot the shot. You got to turn it down, take a drive, take the mid-range shot. You got plenty of room. There's Carson, who has been, relatively speaking, quiet tonight. Baczynski does get a touch here finally. Against Rocky with the hook shot, no good. Rebound Gilling, who was open and just didn't shoot. Waited until he was guarded and missed the shot. And now Baczynski comes down hard right on top of Gibbs. Well, let's hope that everybody's okay there. That was nasty. Gibbs seems to be okay. Baczynski landed right on top of him in this play. Foul will go against Gibbs on the play. And underneath, as you could see from Baczynski, was the head of Grant Gibbs. That's a tough guy. I think I'd be crawling back to the bench. Well, what does that say about you, partner? Well, <laughs> if Jordan Baczynski falls on my head, I just probably says a lot. <laughs> Pretty good move by the seven-footer there. Gibbs out with the three fouls. And a little burst here for the Sun Devils once again, but a whistle against Arizona State. A good job on the out of bounds underneath. Remember, Arizona State does an excellent job executing those situations. They got two early points on the out of bounds underneath that time. An easy dump down pass right to Baczynski. And that hook going over his left shoulder was what I thought he should have done on the previous possession. Yeah, they do. It's a good point you make. I mean, I think Herb Sendex is sort of like a genius when it comes to those out of bounds plays. Ethan Rocky, who's been quiet, hits a three. That snaps the 7 0 run. His first made field goal of the game. How about this one? Every field goal that he has made so far this season and attempted has been a three-point shot. Tough entry pass. Good catch from Baczynski. Gilling has Managa right on top of him and just has the ball stolen right away. What a bounce pass. McDermott for the finish.
from your knees. 45 foot foot bounce pass. That was a great basketball play. And Carson with the basket, but I think they call a foul. Who are they calling that against? Paczynski? Watch this from his knees, throw it ahead. <laughs> They've actually waved off that basket for, for Arizona State. Well, that was a bizarre sequence. And it was a spectacular bounce yeah, pass I'm for trying, Creighton. I'm trying to figure out uh, what's going on here. Obviously, we're showing you the great replay. If we're going to hashtag that, by the way, if it was going to be ever a hashtag Sports Center Top 10, it would be because of the pass, not because of the finish. Yeah. But they're trying to figure out whether or not that basket was going to count by Jahee Carson. I don't understand what the confusion is. They did call a personal foul against Jahee. I, now, I thought the basket they is the now foul. good. Okay. Okay. The, the officials are coming over and letting us know the basket is now good. And the, I think the foul was against Baczynski, who was pushing to try to get position as Carson got the shot up. That was not as smooth as it should have been. Well, the communication, you know, it's a very difficult test. The car, they just officially just now announced it over the, the PA system that that basket was good. So it is a bucket. Now a whistle and a foul against Arizona State. That moves Creighton into the bonus. One and one free throws coming up. 8.48 to go. And both teams are in the bonus now, Sean. That's part of what you were saying from the Sun Devils side. They can shoot free throws if they're a little more aggressive. They've just been shooting threes. Well, and especially with a player like Jaheed Carson, as we mentioned. If he starts getting momentum going towards the basket and he, and he attacks and understands what the defense is going to be at so he doesn't pick up a charge, he can get to the free throw line a lot. And he can stop the clock. And if you make them, which has been a big if tonight for Arizona State, you start whittling away this lead a little bit. McDermott makes both free throws. No surprise there. He'll take a seat on the bench. That's always a little bit of a surprise. Just a quick breather for the All-American, Doug McDermott. The senior from Ames, Iowa. Another three. Eric Jacobson just in the game with the rebound, and he was fouled. And free throws coming up for the Sun Devils. Jacobson literally just getting in the game, and he's going to go to the free throw line. He's a good athlete, sophomore from Chandler, Arizona. They think he can develop into an effective post player in the Pac-12. Well, we saw some great performances from him a year ago for Arizona State. 11 missed free throws now tonight for the Sun Devils, and that one was a one-on-one. -on -one. So you, you had the potential to get two. Instead, you get none. No comment necessary. Ragi, who will shoot from a long way out, and he was tempted, passed up the shot. Managa gives it up to Chapman. Right back to Managa. Here's Ragi, that quick release, no good. I think he thought it was good. Carson pull up three, way off. And I think Carson got hit as he went up for that shot. Maybe got the wind knocked out of him. Rocky, he'll try it again. Hits! <laughs> 22 point lead for Creighton. And everything right now is going their way. A timeout again by Herb Zendek in Arizona State. Well, Rocky had been quiet most of the game, has come to life with a couple of threes, and the Blue Jays really showing off all their weapons here in this game, not just Doug McDermott. they got lots of ways to score. It's a very talented team. So the Blue Jays will talk about it in the huddle. Speaking of talent, there'll be a lot on the court at Madison Square Garden, the championship game of the NIT season tip-off. It's a part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. Fourth-ranked team of the country, Arizona. Sixth-ranked Duke Blue Devils, Friday, 6 Eastern on ESPN. When you look at the college landscape, how about these impact transfers across the country? T.J. McConnell and Rodney Hood, both part of that game. DeAndre King, we've already seen him pay off big for Iowa State. Devontae Rice at Illinois, he came from the Missouri Valley Conference. Now in the Big Ten, he's playing well for the Illini. But T.J. McConnell, he is the pass-first point guard, something that they have not had at the University of Arizona. 
and paying off in a big way in the early stage of the season. He's going to need to play really well tomorrow because Rodney Hood and Jabari Parker, they are going to score over 20 each. Yeah, those two, that, that's a dynamic duo these days for Duke. Carson harassed by Chapman. He's really been all over him in this game. Shot clock down to six. Edwards got to shoot it for three. In and out. And I think the pace of this game is going to start to slow down when you get to this half of the floor. Coach McDermott, John Chapman, just slow it down, set up the offense. Six of 21 threes for the Sun Devils, seven of 18 free throws, and the up and under move, even Will Artino into the action. Artino came into this game averaging about seven and a half points per contest. Nice little backdoor play and a layup good for Murray. He had a very successful prep career here in Southern California. And Price High School has produced a lot of players in these last few years. He's another one of those. Nagy, the freshman Kulichov right on top of him. Chapman three good. Wow, is Creighton playing well here tonight or what? They are all focused, razor sharp. They knew this was going to be a big game. Arizona State figures to challenge to be in the top half of the Pac-12 this season. Already a couple of big wins, and they've come out and played with that focus from the start, and they've carried it through. Edwards wide open hits the three. He has been the brightest spot for the Sun Devils in this game. Yeah, I agree with you. He has played with toughness. He has been aggressive at both ends of the floor. A little pressure, just kind of token pressure from the Sun Devils. And you're right, the Blue Jays are content to work some clock, run some half-court offense. And I got passed up the three. going to be the junior Austin Chapman shot clock at six tough shot rebound Sun Devils number situation here see if the Sun Devils can capitalize and they really didn't get the ball into the front court very quickly that's the freshman Kulichov Rebound Blue Jays. A year ago when these two teams met, Jahi Carson had 30. McDermott had 29. Creighton got the win, 87-73. Tonight, it, as much as we focused on those two individual stars, it's really been about a couple of other players really stepping up. Out of bounds off of Creighton. Sends us to a timeout here. Thanksgiving night in Fullerton. We're starting to sense the holidays are coming. I'm sure. Oh, Cars Land, a little Mater. They call me Tope. Mater. <laughs>
not just an offensive team. Sort of a breakout star, career high 20 for Devin Brooks, who gives it up to Gibbs. His head's okay, he's back in the game. McDermott, kind of a high post up, shoots a three, gets knocked to the ground and hits the shot anyway. It's his first made three of the night. And it's not often he goes a game without hitting one. He's got 25. Teardrop shot was off the mark for Chance Murray. Yeah, you know, the one thing that has impressed me about Creighton is just the understanding of the roles and what's expected of you. Uh, Grant Gibbs, you know, you look at a box score, if you if you judge him just based on the box score, you're gonna see some real solid numbers. But his impact on the court far exceeds what he shows up in the box score. Well, that's certainly true for this Blue Jays team gives it right back to McDermott a little two man game and McDermott draws the foul gives who led the conference in assists the last couple of years and a lot of those assists to that guy well it's pretty nice when you got a player as talented as Doug McDermott step back splash down he'll be at the free throw line when we return Well, that's a very elite list in the history of college basketball. Only those 3,000 point plus career scores. Doug McDermott, barring something disastrous, is going to get on that list by the time his senior year at Creighton is over. Probably not going to catch Pistol Pete at the top of the list. Who knows, though? Doug McDermott, the star for the Blue Jays. Jeff Goodman, a guy who has put up huge numbers, but doesn't call a lot of attention to himself, does he? He does not. I've been a lot of uh, around a lot of humble college basketball superstars. Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, uh, some of the best. And obviously he's not going to be a top five pick in next year's NBA draft. But this is a guy who just exhibits humility everywhere he goes. There's no ego with him. Think about this. His dad didn't think he'd be good enough to play at Iowa State when he was the coach there. And McDermott just, he really does typify what college basketball is all about, guys. Yeah, we were looking at some of those numbers and the graphic that came up, talking about the conference leading scorers for both the Missouri Valley and the Big East. And in all likelihood, Doug McDermott will pass both, but he will not be the leading scorer for a particular conference because of the change of conferences. Yeah, so that's sort of a, just a statistical oddity because they're moving to the Big East this year, but it takes away maybe some of the, the lists that Doug can end up on, at least at the top of. Final two plus minutes here from Fullerton. I love the note from Jeff. I, I'm sure a lot of college basketball fans saying, how did our team miss on this guy? How do we not recruit him? Well, dad missed on him. So that sort of takes some other coaches off the hook a little bit. If dad didn't think he could play for the Cyclones. Here's Brooks. It's been that kind of night. My goodness. And Doug even can't believe what he's seeing from Devin Brooks. Edwards three. Rebound Sun Devils. Put back is good. Brooks a perfect four for four from behind the arc. Now a whistle on a timeout. The Blue Jays want to get some substitutes in this game for the final minute 33. Well, for Greg McDermott, I think it is a big part of the story of this season for the Blue Jays leaving the Missouri Valley, which was good to that program for a lot of years and headed to the Big East Conference. That is a step up in competition, even in the reworked Big East. A step up in competition. It'll help their overall RPI. And... For Doug McDermott, you know, it's going to be a great challenge. A lot of new venues, uh, and in particular, you know, those teams are going to have to try to figure out how they're going to defend him. You know, it's, it's going to be, everything is brand new. Where the lockers are, where you're staying in hotels, everything is different when you, when you switch conferences. Now, I think it will be fun for New York City, for Philadelphia, for Washington, D.C. to get a look, some great hoop cities. And talking about the new Big East and Creighton joining the conference. It is a different looking league from the one we've gotten to know over the last three decades. Yeah, the Big East has, has shifted a little bit and it, it is coming a little bit more west, obviously with, with Creighton. But well, the interesting thing, you, you talk to Doug McDermott and you ask him, have you, have you ever been to New York City? You know, have you ever been in Madison Square Garden? And he hasn't. And he's going to be there this year. He's going to be playing there. And 
a very different feel for this program moving forward when you when you step on that stage. Well, and I tell you what, you know, that's an arena that has seen them all, seen all the greats come through there over the years. But they'll be excited about McDermott showing up in the garden. They will. They love a big event. They love a great player. Steve Lavin's team awfully athletic this year. A lot of great length. They're going to try to throw all that length at them. Final minute of this one. Very impressive performance for the Blue Jays. We figured this one was coming right down to the wire. We'd see high scoring on both sides. It's really been all Creighton. Well, in this tournament setting like this, too, now for Arizona State, it's how quick can you bounce back from this? You know, I think Jimmy Dykes said it during the Maui Invitational when Gonzaga lost their opening round game against Dayton, is you can't let Dayton beat you twice. And for Arizona State, you can't let Creighton beat you twice. You got to bounce back tomorrow and turn it into a positive. Now, College of Charleston is capable. That three is off the mark from Bo Barnes. Rebound Blue Jays, and probably now we'll just let the final seconds tick off the clock. Well, Devin Brooks kind of stole the show tonight. McDermott did what he does. Uh, but Devin Brooks, a career high night for him, and a convincing win over a very good Arizona State Sun Devil team. Yeah, they looked every bit Creighton did, like the 20th ranked team in the country or better. And Doug McDermott was tremendous, but it wasn't all Doug. So our semifinals are set on Friday, 3:30 Eastern on ESPN. George Washington. So